Okay, so yes, I ghosted y'all. <laughs> I ghosted you, I am sorry, but let's talk about it. Oh, you are not gonna believe what happened to me. So the last video that I posted, oh, if you missed it, I'll insert a link. But the last video that I posted, which was over a month ago, it's been that long. Well, the video did pretty good and they did pretty good by my standards because I um, remember I've only been on YouTube probably like four or five months and this was the best performing video that I've ever had. Like the views was up, the watch time was up, the watch time was insane. Like people were watching it from beginning to end. And that was a month ago because inserts imposter syndrome. Y'all, I started getting in my head and the thought of so many people watching me, just every time I turned the camera on, every time I sat down the script, like I just, I nutted up. And every decision that I made for my channel after that, I second guessed everything. The, the strategy that I had already created, scrapped it. The decisions that I made and the direction that I was going, scrapped it. And every time I sat down to turn the camera on, look at the camera and talk, like, I didn't know who I was. And it was all because there was a potential that thousands of people may watch this. Like it was so cute when it was just, you know, the girls and we were just chopping it up, sharing my day, a little insight, but thousands, that's a different ball game. Also, because the video did so well, like I feel like I kind of know what is gonna perform better than other things. Like I know what type of videos will do better. And I had a full drawn out plan of hundreds, maybe not, not hundreds, probably like tens, <laughs> tens, probably like 50 video ideas. And now that I know like what type of videos perform well, it was really difficult for me to sit down and waste my time and my energy scripting, recording, editing, writing, all those things because I'm in the back of my mind, I was like, this ain't even gonna work. I know it works, let me just go that direction. And so the entire YouTube strategy that I had, I had to scrap it because I had a video that does well. I feel like they don't talk enough about what happens when you do go viral like all of the mental cartwheels that you have to go through in order to turn the camera back on. Not only that, but the comments were interesting. Some of them were so supportive. Thank you to everybody who left a good comment. And then some of them I just had to delete, block and keep it pushing because they were kind of ugly. So I feel like whenever we, you know, aspire to do things and be things, we don't really think about how prepared we have to be when that day comes and you got to be prepared like on a mental level on an emotional level and then on a rebound level because you got to get yourself up and try again so here i am this is me trying again um and what's really cool is that i am this close to being monetized so hopefully <laughs> Hopefully by the six month mark, we'll have some great news to report, but this is a life update. So let's get into it. Okay. So I was supposed to bring y'all along, but it's hard recording content and trying to record behind the scenes, but we just wrapped up a Best Buy campaign. Um, they need content for the Mofi battery pack. I have another brand of this, but this one has 5,000 A, girl, 5,000. It was a lot more of the one that I have. So this one is a lot better. Um, but I just recorded some quick, like I'm about to run out the house. My phone's dead. I need to hurry up and charge it, but I don't have a charger, but I have my Mofi. So that was kind of like the storyline, the concept for that. And then I also did a... Um, campaign with Nordstrom's Rack. So this was like the outfit, the get ready with me. I'll have to show y'all. I took my shoes off because them shoes hurt my feet. And these hoops hurt too. But, but this is it. Um, I thought it was cute. I am in love with this oversized blazer. Um, I would definitely, hold on, I'm trying to hold the camera and do this keep my sleeves rolled up with it. But anyway, Nordstrom's Rack, 30 bucks. The jeans from Levi's from Nordstrom's Rack, they was like, maybe like 40 bucks. These earrings are by Maywell. They kind of are like the Fendi, um, like some Fendi dupes. 
And then, I mean, that's really it. Got my hair in a bun. I thought about throwing on one of these hats. So why did that turn blue? I thought about throwing on one of these hats because it's the concept is fall, even though it's technically not fall. Thought about throwing on one of these hats because that would like eat. But um, the hat is not from Nordstrom's Rack, so they're probably not cool with me putting on the hat. But it's so cute. Look at that with some shoes. Yes, honey. This will be my outfit for when I go somewhere. But anyway, kind of like the concept for today's shoot. One of them is due today. Which one do today? One of them is due today and the other one is due tomorrow. So um, that's what I've been doing. Recording content. This earring about to fall out because it ain't got no back. But hey, bye. It's just about to be so awkward. I'm about to um, record a voiceover. <laughs> Voiceovers are already awkward enough because you're just talking to yourself. So, I think my face is oily, so I'm just pat this real quick. Actually, I'll be right back. A voiceover. So, I have to get real awkward. Voiceovers are already awkward by themselves because you're doing it over and over sometimes and it's like you're talking to yourself but to have the camera recording while you do it is man it's about to be cringe but i'm gonna do it anyway all right so we are recording the voiceover for the mophie battery pack i don't even know where it's at and so just to recap i have recorded the footage um i actually recorded two campaigns at one time <laughs> Who do I think I am? I just edited one. Now I'm editing the Best Buy and it is five o'clock. I don't have Logan, so I'll probably, you know, just continue to work, to work but I probably would have been logged off. But I've been going since this morning. So to shoot two campaigns, it's taking me a full day. I don't know how people are able to do this and have a full-time job. And it's five o'clock and I did, it doesn't feel like I did, did a lot, all I did was record a campaign and send it off, but it took the whole day. I'm gonna do okay. So I'm gonna record the voiceover on my phone. I just I don't quite know how to record it on my computer. It'd probably be easier if I could. I don't know how to do it yet. Um, so I just record it on my phone, then I airdrop it to the computer, and then just add it to CapCut as the voiceover. Voice memo. Okay, so I got my script. Mm. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you're about to walk out the door and this happens? Meet the Mophie Snap Juice Pack Mini. You can charge on the go. No more hunting for outlets all night. The mag safe ensures you get the perfect charge every time. Light enough to carry with you. Don't leave the house without it. That sounds kind of rushed. You won't leave the house without it. You won't. Fee snap juice pack mini you can charge on the go no more hunting for <laughs> okay okay stop yeah stop content has been submitted for Norsham drag and best buy y'all life has been lifing and I know it's lifing for everybody right now so I'm not even gonna sit here on my soapbox but summer almost took me out in a body bag Y'all did not tell me what it was like to have kids during the summer. And I was absolutely not prepared. Not only was I not prepared, but I had my four-year-old niece and my five-year-old nephew. So I was definitely not prepared for everybody. So my brother, my sister, and myself, we all have kids around the same age. And this is the age where they're no longer in like preschool and they're about to enter big kid school. And so the summer is like left up to the parents. What are y'all supposed to do? What do we do with these kids during the summer? And for whatever reason, my entire family thinks I don't work. Because I work for myself, they think that I just have all this time in the world. And I do have a lot of flexibility, which I'm grateful for. But I still need to get stuff done. Like, I still need to work. So, majority of the summer, I either had Logan or Logan and her cousins. And I don't know if you've ever tried to record content with kids around. In my video, I was trying to record. Oh, mine. That's mine. It's black. Remember, yours is white. Mommy, you have to trap me. I'm not trapping you. I'm trying to record a video. 
Thank you. I I'll need it. Oh, thank you. I'll take one. Okay. Mwah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cheating. No, it's not. You gave me a kiss. Mwah. Thank you. Hey, that was, that was, that was the same like the last one with the baby. Kiss. You got me. So it was impossible for me to record content with a house full of four and five year olds. So if you've been looking for me, I've been drowning. Summer almost took me out. But good news, Logan has officially started pre K. I'm seeing her pimp on. Say good morning. Say good morning. It's my first day of school. I picked it. And big kids school. I We're gonna brush your teeth first, okay? Yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, you don't have a YouTube with Aunt Barbie. Mm -hmm. I have little foot nails, like my nails. Hi, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Alright, be what still. What you doing? Be still. Please grab me in the ear. I'm sorry. It's okay. Look at my hair. Say Let's get Logan in her lunch box. Yeah. Okay, so I'm about to go downstairs to do devotion. This is one thing I try not to, like this is a non-negotiable. Like the only thing I'm trying to negotiate is at what point in my day am I gonna do it? Am I gonna do it at five o'clock in the morning or am I gonna do it after I drop Logan off at school, after I brush my teeth? Like that's the only part that's negotiable. But I'm finna do it. But before I do it, I did wanna talk about a meeting that I had yesterday with uh, talent management. Um, I kind of, I've always said this and I'm going to always say it that the kind of work that I do, it, it goes in cycles. One minute, everything popping, money flowing, bags is flowing. Um, give me my money. Everything is just great. And then the next minute is like, what? I'm still here. Can y'all still give me some work? And so, um, and I've always said that, like, it just kind of fluctuates. It depends on the time of the quarter. It depends on the time of the year. It depends on the time of the day you send the email. Seriously. And so, um, a talent agent kind of put out a filler in talent management, not an agency. Um, even though she does have an agency, we're not going to call it sign to an agent. We're just going to have somebody manage so I had a meeting with her yesterday and everything, I mean, I don't really know what to look for. I didn't know what questions to ask, um, but everything seemed fine. I feel like I was, I don't know, I'm just not a people person. I'm really not a people person. I need to come to grips with that. It may be a little bit of like social awkwardness, um, but I don't like lighten up and open up until I know you and... Mm. It was like a stiff, I don't, I guess it was an interview. It was kind of like a discovery call, but it was like really stiff. And it wasn't because of her. I feel like it was because of me. Um, but everything she was saying was absolutely perfect. It made sense. Um, so if they decide that they want to move forward, I would happily, happily move forward with um, someone else kind of just managing my inbox, managing my pitches, managing my, you know, negotiating, even though I feel like I'm that girl when it comes to negotiating, um, having somebody else just kind of like, you know, pull those strings for me just seems a, a whole lot better. Um, so yeah. So I had a meeting with a uh, talent management yesterday, just a little update. What else has happened since the last time we talked? It's been a whole month. So I know it's been when it comes to me, y'all, I'm so scatterbrained. And it's just feel like it's getting worse. 
don't know if it's because I just got so much stuff going on. Or the age. I don't know, but I just feel like my level of concentration. My level of concentration is... It's pretty bad. I got to tell y'all about the time that I was diagnosed with ADHD and then I said no. <laughs> so I used to play basketball in college. Um, and one day in the middle of practice, uh, my coach was talking and I just kind of randomly turned a cartwheel in the middle of her talking while everybody else was paying attention behind her because I was just so bored and I had a lot of energy and I just turned a cartwheel and honestly in that moment I didn't think there was any repercussions for turning that cartwheel I was like what I'm just you know letting out some energy I'm bored um but she sent me to a doctor shortly after that and um with great cause like she had a reason to and the doctor ended up um like diagnosing me with ADHD and I went home shortly after that and I kind of just like casually told my brother <laughs> just casually told my brother who is uh very much so aware and woke how about that um that's a good way to describe him he's woke and so I casually just told my brother yeah you know I went to college and you know, within two months of being in college, they first, you know, they diagnosed me with ADHD and he flipped. He was like, you ain't got no ADHD. Don't let nobody tell you you got ADHD. That's just trying to label you. And like, ever since he said that, I just kind of been going through life. Like that was 10 plus years ago. I've been going through life thinking that I don't have ADHD, like in denial that I don't have it because my brother told me that I don't have it, even though a doctor told me I did. And so um, here I am up in age and it's not as uh, taboo to like have ADHD or to have anything really. It's not as taboo as it was back in the day to have some kind of mental health or something, depression, anxiety, like people battling with that stuff every single day. And so it's not as taboo to have it. And so now that I have accepted it, A lot of the stuff that I do and say and how some of the things that I do, it just all makes a lot more sense now. And so I went on a tangent to tell y'all that I've been walking around in denial with ADHD. And so now that Logan is back in school, the way I previously did business, um, I used to work till 530. Y'all didn't tell me these kids get out of school at three o'clock. Y'all also didn't tell me about the pickup line. What? Like, drop a comment if you know what I'm talking about. That pickup line is nothing to play with. So not only do they get out of school at 3 o'clock, but you have to hop in the pickup line at like 2.30. And so my work day used to go till 5.30. I used to have a full, regular, you know, 8, 9, 10-hour day work day. Not no more. Now my work day has to end at 2.30 to go pick up my daughter from school. So I'm not complaining. It's a blessing that I get to do it. It's a blessing that I get to, to, to you know, be there in that capacity. Um, like, I, I don't know how this will work if I was still teaching. I don't know if y'all know this, but I used to be a classroom teacher. If you haven't watched that video, go watch it. Left the classroom to pursue full-time content creation, and that was three years ago. And so now I have to, like, revise my work hours as a business owner because school let out at three o'clock. On top of that, business has been really slow. Like I've always said that, you know, with what I do, um, it goes through seasons, it goes through ebbs and flows. Sometimes everything is flowing and clicking and everybody wanna book with you and, and everyone wants you to create content. And then sometimes things just slow down to a dead stop. And so on top of all the changes that were happening in my personal life with my family, uh, with the summer, with life, business was also changing too. And so I've always said that whenever it's slow, 
that's when I use that time to, you know, like rest and unwind and, you know, start working on other business ventures. <sighs> but when it's slow, sometimes it also comes with a bout of depression, like depression, because it's your lifeline. Like your business is your lifeline. You, you know, it's not like everyone else who has a, regardless how fast or how slow business is, if you work for someone else, you still gonna get a paycheck. Whereas for me and most business owners, you know, if business is slow, then so is your money. So is your funds. And so, and so on top of business being slow, what's real crazy is I've been in business for five years and four years five been in business for five years and for whatever reason every time around the slow season like clockwork is going to get slow around this season and i'm never prepared and life is finally starting to get back to normal i have my onboarding call with uh talent management talent management is not the same as like being signed well i don't know if it's the same as being signed to an agency or not but um um so instead of me like doing what I've been doing, which is like hustling and, you know, pitching and trying to find brand deals and keep the money coming in. Um, even UGC deals. I won't have to do that anymore. Someone else gets to do it for me. And so I get to like ask questions and figure out the process and see like what's our game plan. Um, I'm also going to ask for feedback on the current content that I create and how I can make it better, stand out a little bit more. And then also another question I have that I need to not forget is my engagement is so low right now. It's the lowest it's ever been. And I know Instagram is like, you know, Instagramming, but um, I'm going to see if she has any recommendations on how I can increase my engagement. I am in this weird place where my content is kind of starting to bore me. <laughs> and I'm really specifically talking about Instagram. Um, like I'm kind of bored with creating the same types of content. So I have been trying to experiment um, with different forms of content and like edits and, you know, the theatrics so we'll see, see how it goes. I did want to put on some makeup and you know, just trying to get semi cute. I ain't trying to be fly or nothing. Um, and we finally kind of got like a routine now. It took me a while to just adjust to summer. And then when summer was over then I had to adjust to this new school schedule cause they get out of school at three o'clock and start before the sun is even up. And so I've been, you know, acting like a baby. That's exactly what I've been doing. Complaining, adjusting, crying a little bit. Because every time I look at her, it's like she's getting bigger, taller. Her face is changing. And my feelings were immediately shot. Like I cried. And then I'll put on a little bit of makeup. Probably a lot. We'll see. Oh. Also, we pulled the carpet out of our loft and office area. And so the upper level kind of feels different because we don't have the carpet anymore. It feels a lot lighter. Um, I've been wanting to get rid of that carpet since the day I moved in here or the day we purchased the place. How about that? And it finally happened. And when I tell you such a blessing as to how it happened, because I had this idea to like revamp my off. I say office, but it's just like a workspace. My husband actually has an office. That's his workspace. And so I've always had this idea to rip up the carpet because it's like high traffic areas. The girl, Logan be playing there, you know, that's where we get dressed some mornings. It's also where we do our laundry and, and then it's also where I work. And so it is a high traffic area and I wanted to, um, just kind of give it a fresh, like a fresh facelift. And so we pulled up the carpet then we added some laminate tile, vinyl planks. I don't know what they're called. 
Um, but the blessing is it was a sponsored brand deal. And so what probably would have taken me thousands of dollars really didn't even take me that much at all because the material was provided and we just had to like do the blood, sweat and tears part of it. Home Depot. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my hair. I can't do braids. Braids are just so cute. Um, and I love them when I have them. And they always, like, who doesn't look amazing with some, some braids? But they, um, girl, they do a number on my edges. Like, edges be shot after I get braids. And so, because I'm, I've made so much progress to grow them back, I cannot get braids and so braids is off of the list of things that i can do with my hair um i've been thinking about doing a wig just because they're easy and just because you can look glamorous with them but my husband does not like wigs and i like to take my off at night <laughs> So things are finally starting to get back to normal. Um, I'm realizing that change, even though it's scary and sometimes it's super uncomfortable, but I'm noticing that it's good, it's beautiful. It means that there's a new season, there's a new horizon, there's um, a new routine, there's new things happening. And even like I said, even though you, know, you gotta get a little uncomfortable, it's also an opportunity for me and you to grow. So embrace change, change is not bad. Trust me when I say I was going through it. Like the changes that were happening in my life were happening so rapidly and so like out of nowhere it felt like. That it was hard for me to really like adjust. Um, and I felt like I was going through like this spout of depression. But now that I have pulled myself out of it, um, I'm excited. Not only is it a, a life change, but it's also like a external seasonal change. So this is my favorite time of the year because the fashion changes, the color palette changes, the weather changes, just like the vibe, the mood, the smell of the air changes. Like it's just, this is my favorite time of the year. But change is good. So if you're like me and you were just in a funk, um, I'm praying for you, I'm rooting for you. Pull yourself out of it, y'all. You got to, it's a lot of people, a lot of things that are depending on you. So, um, good, best of luck to you and I'll see y'all around. Bye.